In this one, I'll be showing how you can convert your images and videos into ASCII art, basically so your picture is made up of a bunch of characters like this. And we're going to do this without the compositor. This is all using shader nodes. For those of you who want this effect without making it, you can grab it for a few bucks on Gumroad. I made it neat, easy to adjust, and it includes a few different character sprite sheets. Links are in the description. Before we dive in, here's a little summary of the steps we'll be taking. And if you want to jump forward, I'm putting timestamps for each step. First, we make a sprite sheet that has all the characters we want to use. I use a free add-on for this called TextFX that makes it easy to export each character as a separate square image. Then I bring it into Affinity Designer and lay out the characters in order of how much space they take up, basically like light and dark values. And I'm doing mine horizontally. You could use a free program for this like GIMP or Inkscape too. Then you just have to export that image. Second step is pixelation. We go back into Blender, add in a plane, and put our video onto it with the window texture coordinate. To pixelate the texture coordinate, I separate it into XYZ channels, and then I add a math node set to snap onto each one of those channels, and then combine them back together. The snap nodes let you decide how many pixels you want on each axis. Third step is tiling. Basically, we take our pixelated texture coordinate and subtract it from the original coordinate. This places the zero position in the corner of each pixel so that we can place our characters from the sprite sheet into each pixel accurately. You just have to multiply the coordinate by however many pixels you have to make them the right size. Step four is getting our sprite sheet to work. We bring in our sprite image and plug the tiled texture coordinate into it. Since our image is horizontal and each character is a square, just like our pixels, we just have to scale our sprite image down on the x-axis to get rid of any stretching. The x scale needs to be one divided by however many characters are in your sprite sheet. So if you have 10 characters in your sprite sheet, the x scale would be one divided by 10 or 0.1. To choose which character to place, we just move the X location like this. I use a math node set to snap for this too. If you give the increment the same value as the X scale, you'll only see one character at a time and there won't be any weird sliding problems like this. Step 5 is getting our image to control the sprites. To do that, I use a separate HSV node and plug the V, or the value, into the value of our snap node. If it doesn't look right, you might have to invert it first. And that's pretty much it. There's more you can do, but those are the basic steps to get this result. Alright, let's walk through from the beginning now. Alright, so I'm in Blender 2.92 for this one. First thing I'm going to do is just delete everything except for our camera. And then I'm going to select our camera and hit Alt-G and R to just reset its location and rotation. And next I'm going to go to Edit and Preferences. And you're going to want to um, install the text effects add-on if you're doing it the same way I am. It is free, you just have to um, you know, select it, turn it on. And also later I'm going to be using the Node Wrangler, so you might as well turn that one on too. And then I'm going to select our camera and just pull that up slightly. And with that still selected, go over to this little camera button right here. And I'm just going to change this from perspective to orthographic. And then if we hit zero, we'll look through our camera right here. I'm just going to select output properties right here and change our resolution to something that's square. You can set it to anything you want. I'm going to make mine pretty small. It's just going to be 32 by 32. Our characters are going to be pretty small in the end, so I don't need a lot of resolution. All right, next you want to hit your N uh, button to open up the side panel right here. Go to text effects right there and just click the add button and choose simple. And it'll add this in for you right here. And for the effect, I'm going to choose read lines. And right here, it gives us um, an option to add a text document right here. And so I have to make one of those. I'm just going to drag this down and make a new window. Uh, and I'm going to select text editor. So now that we have this open, I'm just going to hover over it and hit uh, control space bar and it'll just maximize that window. So I'm going to hit new right here to add a new document and we can just put in whatever characters we want, um, just separated by a line break like that. So I already have my characters selected. I made this earlier and I'm just going to use the same ones. It's just nine characters with a space at the end, but we don't need to put the space. That's later. So we have them all input right here. We can just hit control space bar again. And over here, we're just going to select that document. It's just called text right here and then hit time control. And then we can select which one we want with this right here. We just have to choose uh, the right duration. So I'm going to change this to nine because we have nine different lines right here. This is just selecting what line we're on basically. So we can do it like that. So with this selected, I'm just going to go over here to object data properties, the little uh, A right there. And under alignment, paragraph and alignment, I'm just going to change both of these to center. So our text is in the center. And if you want to change the font, you can do that right here too. I'm going to change mine to uh, courier and we can just scale this up until it's pretty close to the edge right there. 
And I'm just going to want to run through this and make sure that it's not going off the edge at all. And if it is, you just scale it down slightly. Another thing we can do is in here, just type in hash and then frame, and it'll just match the frame that we're on like this. You can use the arrows to navigate. And for our timeline, we only want nine characters. So I'm just going to change the endpoint to nine like that. See, this is going off the edge like that. So when you have it all scaled the way you want, I'm just going to add some materials. So I'm going to go into render the viewport shading right here, and I'm going to turn off any um, world lighting you have. So it's just going to be black like that. Uh, for the material, I'm just going to add a new one. I'm going to change this to emission. You're going to want to turn bloom off for this. I'm using Eevee. So I'm going to turn bloom off. You can pretty much shut all of this off because it's just black and white. And I also want this to be completely white. So I'm going to color management right here and change this from filmic to standard. And this will make it completely white. Then you just want to set your um, output settings. So I'm going to change this to black and white because we have no color. Compression I'm going to turn down all the way. And I'm going to keep it as a PNG sequence. And you just want to select your folder. When you have everything set up, you just want to go to the first frame and make sure that you're on your first character right here. Turn off all your gizmos and all overlays and stuff like that. And then go to view and viewport render animation. And then we just want to check this in the folder that it exported to. See if we have everything. It looks like we're missing the period at the end, and we're, this is duplicating. Like I said, it gives me some weird errors sometimes. I haven't completely figured out the quirks, but I know how to get it to do what I want. So I'm just going to add another frame in here. So this is 10, and we're just going to try again. Viewport, render, animation. And now we have all of them. I'm just going to delete the first one so we don't have any duplicates. All right. Now I'm just going to shut this, and I'm going to open up uh, a design program called Affinity Designer which isn't free. It doesn't cost a lot. I think it's like $50 maybe, something like that. Yeah, but you can use something like Inkscape or GIMP or whatever. So I'm going to make our document. We know that each of our images is 32 pixels by 32. So I'm going to make the height 32 and we're going to make this horizontal. So 32 times 10 is 320. And then we just want to drop all of our images in here. And I'm just going to spread them out evenly, except for the end, which is going to be a blank spot. So here we are. And I'm just going to swap these two because I think this one does look a little darker slightly. Like that. I'm just going to distribute these again. And then for the last one, I'm just going to make that black. Like that. So we have a blank spot. And then I'm just going to export this as a PNG. So we're on to our second step now. I'm just going to add in a plane and I'm going to look uh, down onto it from the top like that and go into the shading tab right here. And for this, I'm going to want to look through the camera and just zoom in until the plane is filling up the screen like that. And you just want to select your plane and we're going to put um, our whatever image you want to convert into ASCII art. You're just going to want to put that on here. So I'm going to add a new material right here and delete this. Add in an image texture. Plug that into the surface. You can just plug it in directly or you can feed it into an emission shader. And then I'm going to bring in a texture coordinate and we're just going to plug in the window right there. And we just want to load in our texture now. And when you plug in the window right there, it's just going to um, be the same shape as the window that you're using. So you just want to make sure if, if this looks warped at all to you, you want to make sure that your output resolution is the same as the video that you're using or the image or whatever. I'm using a video for this and I know that it is 628 frames. So I'm going to change this number to 628. I'm also going to change this over here to 628, our ending frame. And I want to turn on cyclic and auto refresh. And I'm also going to change this from linear to closest. And instead of repeating, I'm going to do extend like that. All right. So what we need to do is we need to pixelate this. That's what we're going to be doing first. Basically, we're just going to be taking our window texture coordinate right here. 
I'm going to bring in a separate XYZ. And for this, we only need um, X and Y, but I'm going to do it for all three just to be thorough. And then I combine XYZ. And you just want to feed all these back in. And this might seem silly to just like separate them and then combine them again. But what we're going to be doing is putting stuff in between here. So we're going to be separating each channel, altering them, and then putting them back together. And what we're going to do is add in a math node. I'm going to put that right there and change this to snap. And so let's take a look at what this is doing. This is what the texture looks like originally. And then when we snap it, now it's just two different portions, just black and white. And why is that happening? Um, it has to do with the increment right here. So if I add in, I'm just going to duplicate it to add a second math node and change this to divide. And so I'm going to make the top one, one, and the bottom one is going to be however many different colors we want right here. So if we want two, I'm just going to plug this into the increment. We have two. If I want four, it's going to split the gradient into four solid colors. And that's how it works, basically. So we're going to do this for each channel right here, for the X, Y, and the Z. Like I said, you don't need to do this for the Z, but I like doing it just in case I decide to make this three-dimensional. It's now a three-dimensional texture. And you can just plug this into the increment for each. And then when we put them back together, now it's pixelated. You can see all you have to do is change this value right here to change the resolution like that. You can also get this effect just by using a Voronoi texture like this and choosing position and turning the randomness all the way down. That gives you the same thing, but you don't have as much control over like the resolution. The way I'm doing it, you can adjust the size of the pixels. So what we need to do to make these squares is just change the increment, but only on one axis. I'm going to change it on the X axis. So to do that, you just need to use your aspect ratio. Basically, just know your screen resolution, what you have your, your camera set to right here. I'm just going to duplicate this uh, divide node, and I'm going to plug in uh, 1080 on the top and 1920 on the bottom. So we have our height and our width right here. And then I'm going to duplicate this again. I'm going to put this between the snap and I'm going to feed the, uh, the increment into it. Change this to multiply. I'm just going to change this to one for now so nothing is changing. You want to make sure that this is plugged into the increment or else it's not going to work right. And then you just want to plug this into the second value and this should work fine now. These should all be uh, square. And you just got to remember that when you're setting the resolution, that's the height right here. So you can see our value is four and we have four pixels going up like that. And then you just want to plug this into your image right there. And let's take a preview. So this is pretty low resolution. So let's turn this up. And you can see it's pixelated now. You can change the resolution like that. So I'm just going to have this set to eight for now while we do everything else. So we have our pixelation now, and we can move on to step three, which is tiling. Basically to do this, it's pretty easy. We're just gonna take vector math node, and with the vector math, you wanna set that to subtract. I'm gonna plug this one into the bottom, and we're gonna plug our original um, window right here into the top. And let's take a peek. So now what this is doing is putting the zero point into each of the corners right there. And what this does is it, it lets us tile it. But this isn't working right because we need to scale this up afterward. So I'm going to add in a mapping node. And I'll show you how I like to test this out. Instead of using this image texture, I'm going to add in another vector math node. And I'm going to change this to length. And then after that, I'm going to add a math node set to greater than. I'm going to change that to 1. And basically, we just need to um, scale up to whatever our resolution is, which is pretty easy. We have our resolution right here. So I'm just going to create a value node. And I'm going to put our resolution in it so we can reuse this value. We have this set to 8 right now. Plug it in there. And I'm also going to plug that into the scale right here of our mapping texture. Now you can see we're actually able to see some things. But it's stretched out on the x-axis. 
So once again, I'm going to add in a combine XYZ. That way we can alter each of these separately. I'm going to plug this into all of them for now. And let's see which one we need to change. Uh, add a math node in, put this into the X. Basically what the length node is doing is checking the distance to the zero point. So when I set this to one, it's making a black circle with the radius of one. Basically what I'm looking for is for it to be touching both of the sides like that. And then we know that this is actually square, but I don't want to have to guess like that. I want it to be automated. And so the easiest way to do that is once again, we need our aspect ratio because it's the same number, but it's, uh, it's flipped. So an easy way to solve this is add in two value nodes these are going to be, once again, our, uh, our width and our height. So our height is on the top, 1920 is our width. And we can just plug these in here. And then I'm going to create a second one that's just going to be the same thing, but the values are switched. Like that. And you can plug this into that multiply node. And now this should match just fine. And we can get rid of these because we were just using that for viewing. And now we can see it's actually tiling, but we don't want to tile this. We want to tile our characters. So now that we have our tiling working, we can move on to step four, which is our, which is getting our sprite sheet to work. So first I'm just going to bring in our sprite sheet image. You can just duplicate this and load it in. There we go. You can see it's pretty stretched out. So I'm just going to plug in the, um, the tile vector that we just made into that. We're going to view it. You can see this is pretty stretched out. So I'm going to add a mapping node in and put that before it. And basically what we need to do, since we know that all of our pixels are squares and all of our tiles are squares, all of our characters are also square because that's how we made it. We just have to stretch this out until it lines up right here. You can see if we take this and just divide it by 10, that's how many characters we have. This lines up perfectly. So that's what we need to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in another combine XYZ. And this is going to be for the scale. I'm just going to change all these to one for now. So when we plug it in, it doesn't, you know, go to zero. And I'm going to use another math node, change this to divide. And I'm going to do one on the top. And then however many characters we have in our sprite sheet on the bottom, like that. So we only have 10. And I like to do it this way because if you switch out the sprite sheet, all you have to do is update this number right here to match the amount of characters. You can just plug that into X and that should work fine. And if we want to select a different character, we just have to move the X location right here. You can see it just slides between them like that, but we don't want it to slide like that. So I'm going to add in another math node and I'm going to change this to snap like we did before. And I already explained how this worked earlier. Basically, we're just going to use the same number for here because it needs to match however many characters we have. And once again, another combine X, Y, Z. So because we only want to edit the X. So I'm going to change all these to zero, plug it in, and we can plug this into the X. And now when we move this value right here, it just snaps between them instead of sliding. And when it gets to the end, it just goes black because we have this set to extend. If we have this set to repeat, it will just repeat itself like that. But we do have one black space in there, which is nice. So I am gonna take this and keep it on um, extend right there. Next, we wanna make sure that our image is actually driving how these are selected. So make sure that uh, your image is using the pixelation vector and not the tiling one. We can just view that. And I'm going to turn this up to something a little higher and our resolution is right here. So I'm going to set this to maybe uh, 32 just so we can actually make sense of what's going on. And I'm just going to bring in a separate HSV and this stands for hue, saturation and value. So when we plug it in here, um, each of these is going to be black and white. But if we bring in a combine uh, HSV and just change all of these to one, you'll see that this drives the hue, this drives the saturation, and then this is the value right there. What we want to do is we just want to use our value, which is like how light and dark things are. 
and we know that this is only ever going to go as low as zero and as high as one. So we can just plug this directly into our value because this is only ever going to go as high as one. If this goes past one, it's just gonna be black, which is fine. So we're just gonna plug this in. And I think this is reversed. So I'm just gonna add in an invert node, plug that in right there. So now you can see when we turn our resolution up even higher, maybe something like 96, we're actually getting what we want now. And it's actually picking up the lighter spots with the first color. And this is this is why you gotta make sure your sprite sheet is in order of you know, like how much space each character takes up. And if this doesn't look right to you when you do it, you just might have to rearrange your characters so that they're in the right order. We can even play it and see it moving now. So this is the basics of it, but we're gonna take it a little further. I want to be able to control the contrast and, and brightness of this. So there's actually a node just for that. You can just type in contrast when you search and you can affect the contrast like this. You're also going to want to make sure that this snap node is clamped. And I also want there to be color. So to do that, I'm going to add in a mix RGB right here. I'm just going to plug our character into the factor and we're going to use it like a mask. So if you make the first one black and the second one white, we'll have just what we had before like that. And if you want, you can actually just use this to control whatever color you want your characters to be. But we are going to just plug our color directly into that white slot and you can see our color is coming through now but our periods are like really dark and we don't want that we just want it to be like basically like this we want the hue and the saturation with the value turned up so there's no black we don't have any darkness um, because our value is already be being controlled by the sprites themselves so we just want to separate the hsv and combine it again but don't plug in the value, just turn it all the way up to one. And you can plug that into that second slot right here. And now let's take a look at that. So that looks a little better. Oh yeah, one thing I didn't mention is that um, you should probably turn this to, to not be filmic, to instead be standard. And that'll give you more accurate colors that actually match the image you brought in. One thing I'd like to be able to do is zoom in on this and actually look around and change the angle and stuff. But you can see when we move this, because it's using the window coordinate, it doesn't really work that way. But there is kind of an easy way to, um, to switch the texture coordinate. Basically what I'm going to do, I'm just going to um, shift right click and drag to create this group node right there. And I am going to add in a, another mix RGB and plug window into the bottom and UV into the top. And this lets us switch between the UV and the window coordinates, basically just by uh, changing the factor right here. But you can see it stretches it a little uh, when we switch it to UV. So in between here, we just need to add in a mapping node and just warp the scale just like we did with the tiling. So I'm gonna add in a combine XYZ right here and plug this in, make sure all of those are set to one so we're not messing it up too much. And what I want to do is affect the Y right here. And so I know we need a bigger value. So once again, we're going to go back to our aspect ratio, but which one do we want? We want the bigger one, which is going to have the bigger number on top. So that would be our bottom one right here. We can just plug this one into our Y and that should work fine. So now we can actually look at it from a different angle and it'll work okay too. And one reason I like doing this so much, being able to switch back and forth, is because if you want this to be really high res, see, I, if I set this to something like 480, and then I try to render it, you can't really make sense of each individual character when you zoom in. It kind of maxes out at, I think, around like 96. You can still render it and zoom in and still see each individual character. And so if you do want to be able to like zoom in closer and get more dynamic with it, you just want to switch to UV right here and then you can actually get like as close as you want and still be able to see each character like that. You can shoot it from different angles and stuff and I think that's pretty cool. And if you want to change the art that you're converting, you just have to, you know, load up a new image right here. So this one is a simulation that I did. You just have to make sure that it matches the frames again. So we have this right here.
It's just a fluid sim that I made earlier. And if you want to change the sprite sheet, because I already have a few, you just want to load up your new sprite sheet right here. And you just want to change this number to match the amount of uh, characters that are in that. So in this one, I have 95 characters, quite a bit more. Now you can see we have some other characters going on in there. And I also have a block that's fully white. I thought that would be interesting. Another thing, if you don't want any black space right here and you want your darkest value to be something, uh, to be a character, you know, like a period or something like that, you are going to have to change one more thing. So let me load in a sprite sheet here, 93. This one doesn't have any, uh, any black space. So then I just need to change this to 93. So it's the right amount of characters. What we want to do is instead of extend, we want to repeat like this. You can see when we turn the contrast up, the dark spots are getting bright for some reason. And that's because when this rolls over one, it goes back to the same um, as zero to stop. So to stop that from happening, I'm just going to make a, uh, a clamp node put it right here. And we just want to change the maximum to not to basically be um, a little lower. So it never actually gets to one. So to make the value that we need, I'm going to add in a math node set to subtract. And I'm going to make the top number one. And we're going to subtract this number right here. So we're just going to subtract one divided by 93. We're going to subtract this little number from one. So it's really close to one, but it, ne it never actually reaches one. And now you can see our lowest value is this period. And since we're clamping it, you can, uh, you can turn clamp off right here if you want to. It doesn't really matter. It's just a redundancy. And if you want this to be more than just a filter, you can also use this. You can just plug it into, um, you know, whatever other texture you want. So you could plug it into a mission. You want it to be like a TV screen, something like that. Uh, or you could plug it into like a principled BSDF just into the color. See what that looks like. And then I'll just switch this to the UV coordinates. We can have a look at a different angle. Let's see, turn the roughness all the way down. That's kind of neat. So that's it. If you don't want to make your own sprite sheet, I put some on Gumroad for free. And once again, you can get the completed ASCII art generator for a few bucks over there too, as well as some other things like lightning models, barbed wire, and my glitch effect. I also recently set up a Discord server, so if you need help with Blender stuff, if you want to help others, or if you just want to hang out, you can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.